The word doctrine is something that you know many of you have probably heard. It means a system of teaching or beliefs, a particular theology. And usually it is said it uh said in a negative way. You know, well, um it's about relationship, it's not about doctrine. We're not here for doctrine, we're here for praising the Lord. And there's a lot of things that people will say because they don't want to focus on a particular teachings or doctrines or theologies. They want to focus on the experience of a church service. They want to focus on the feelings of love of a church service, but they don't want to focus on doctrine. And there's a reason for that. And that is because they don't have correct doctrine. Now, uh, many of them, of course, don't realize that they're, you know, blatantly wrong. But they do, of course, realize that they don't know very much. They can't answer questions. They can't defend their faith. They do know that there's some things they believe that are in error. But they're more ecumenical. They believe that, well, it's okay. God understands. You know, nobody's perfect. Nobody knows everything. And they just justify it with those excuses so they can continue believing whatever they want. These things may seem to be unimportant to you who... Uh, who are watching this video. But you have to understand that there is only one difference between cults and uh, the faith. And that's doctrine. What is the difference between a cult that is condemned and an actual church? Well, the difference is what they believe or what they teach. That's what makes a group a cult or a church. You see, what somebody believes or teaches defines what uh, what and who they are. Now, knowing everything isn't really important in some ways, but people tend to ignore the importance of correct doctrine. So... They can believe whatever they want, of course. Well, I believe in Jesus Christ. I don't know everything. It's okay. But they forget uh, that doctrine is what causes whole churches to fall away. What is, okay, Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or Seventh-day Adventists, what exactly makes them false? Well, their doctrine their doctrine is the reason why they're false. And, and if they had correct doctrine, they would not be cults. So the reason why that uh, the, re the reason why these groups are false and condemned is because of their doctrine. So doctrine does have a very important role in Christianity because it gives shape to what we believe, what we stand for, who God is, who Jesus is, why he came, etc., etc., etc. It is the heart and soul of what it means to be a Christian. Doctrine is an explanation of what is and is not the Christian faith. So if somebody says it's not about doctrine but about relationship, all you have to do is ask them one question. How can you have a relationship with a God you don't know or understand? I mean, do you have a relationship with a person that you don't know or understand? Well, no. So how can you have a relationship with a deity that you've never seen, that you've never heard, that you've never been around? You have never physically been in the presence of God. You've never seen God. You've never heard his voice. And yet you're going to have a relationship with him when you don't know him or anything about him. Please spare me. You need doctrine if you're going to understand who God is in the first place. What God do you serve? What is he like? What does he love? What does he hate? How does he judge? How does he act? Do you know these things? Do you? Or is it just some vague guess in your mind? Doctrine is the difference between truth of God and the lies of Satan. The lies of Satan and the truth of God have one major difference. One is true. One is false. Correct teachings is important. The reason why is because false teachings come from Satan. Period.
If it's not absolutely true, it is not from God. Now, open your Bibles and do a little research. Do a little study. Try to really understand what it is you believe. And listen, you're not going to know everything. Nobody's going to know everything because this is a body. The body of Christ is like a, a human body. Everyone has their role. Everyone has their place. I mean, and one person might be called to teach, and of course they will have to understand what they teach. Uh, they'll have to know more, and other people might not be called to teach, so they don't have to understand as much. But I do know one thing. Uh, that one person that's not called to teach has to know at least the basic gospel. I mean, because if they don't know the basic gospel, how are they going to put their faith in Christ if they don't know who Christ is or what he did or why? I mean, why should they believe in Christ? Why should they give themselves to Christ? I mean, what are they repenting from? So a small amount of doctrine is important. I mean, even if somebody is never called to teach or preach in their life, they still have to have some ideas to, uh, about what they believe. Because how can they know God if they don't know anything about God? And this is something to think about. What shall we say then? Shall we say that we can live in sin however we want because we're under grace and not under the law? God forbid. How can you possibly live a life of sin? How can you possibly choose to disobey the Lord and love Him? You cannot do that. You have to repent. Repent. 